I greet you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I welcome you to this lecture, where I'm going to be uh, teaching about the accelerator principle. It's a short lecture of 16 slides, where I'm going to explain the accelerator principle as it relates to investment and as it links to the concept of the multiplier. So straight away, I'm going to share my notes, my screen. The accelerator theory of investment um, endogenizes the the investment uh, variable. The investment variable is endogenized because in the simple Keynesian model, investment is assumed to be um, investment is assumed to be exogenous. But in the multiplier accelerator interaction, we endogenize the investment variable. In other words, we establish cross linkages between the national income variable and the investment variable. By way of introduction, um, what we observe with the uh, the accelerator principle is that the Keynesian concept of uh, the multiplier states that as, inv as investment increases, income increases by a multiple amount. On the other hand, there is a concept of accelerate, which was not taken into account by John Maynard Keynes, which became popular after uh, John Maynard Keynes, uh, especially when it comes to discussion of cycles and the uh, theories of economic growth. The acceleration or accelerator principle describes the effect quite opposite to that of the multiplier. According to this concept, when income or consumption increases, investment will increase by a multiple amount. When income and therefore consumption of the people in an economy increases, the greater amount of commodities which will have to be produced. This will require more capital and stock to produce the goods and services. If the already given stock of capital is fully used or fully utilized, since in this case investment is induced by changes in national income or aggregate consumption, investment is no longer exogenous, which is why it is called uh, induced investment because it is induced by a uh, national income or changes in national income by aggregate demand or aggregate expenditure. The accelerator is the numerical value of the relation or relationship between the increase in investment resulting from an increase in income. The net induced investment will be positive if national income increases and the induced investment may fall to zero if uh, national income or output remains constant. So we know national income cannot increase forever. At a certain point, the increase in national income will reach a limit. Uh, it, will, it will sort of dissipate if I may put it that way, it will dissipate. And when the increase in national income dissipates until it plateaus, the, that aspect of investment, which is induced investment, will 
will fall in unison to, to zero as well. Because investment is now income induced. To produce a given amount of output, it requires a certain amount of capital. If YT output is required to, produce, to be produced, and V is the capital to output ratio, the required amount of capital to produce YT output will be given by the following equation. So the first equation, our initial equation is KT, which is the capital stock, which is equivalent to the capital output ratio multiplied by the level of output at time T. Time T being the current time period. Where K stands for the stock of capital or capital stock. And YT stands for the level of output or income. V, as noted earlier, is the capital to output ratio, which is held to be constant. So this capital to output ratio of V is equal to K, capital letter K over Y as the name indicates. And in, in the theory of the accelerator, this capital to output ratio, as I've already noted, is assumed to be constant. Therefore, under the assumption of constant capital to output ratio, changes in output are made possible by changes in the stock of capital. Since we assume constants in the capital to output ratio. Thus, when income is YT, the required stock of capital will be KT is equal to V, the capital output ratio, multiplied by YT, the level of national income. When output or income is equal to YT minus one, then the required stock of capital will be KT which is equal to the constant capital to output ratio, which is represented by V multiplied by YT minus one. And then this continues uh, up to infinite or at infinitum, as we'll see in, on slide number five. It is clear from the preceding exposition that when income increases from YT minus one in period T minus one, uh, to YT in period T, then the stock of capital will increase. Uh, it will increase to KT from, to KT, it will increase from KT minus one to, I'll correct that, from KT minus one to KT. As seen above, KT minus one is equal to V, of yt minus one and kt is equal to v of yt. Hence the increase in the stock of capital in period t is given by the following equation. It's simply the difference between the cap current level of capital and the previous level of capital, which is equal to v uh, of yt minus v of yt minus one. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Um, just a minute. Just a minute. Um, just a minute. Uh, closing some windows that are to step in. Just a minute. Go back to our meeting where we are sharing on the accelerator theory of um, on the accelerator theory of investment. So <clears throat> what I was saying is that uh, 
uh, as seen from the preceding exposition. The, just the immediate past level of capital stock is equal to V of Yt minus one and Kt is equal to V of Yt minus Y, just V of Yt, the current level of national income. So from the uh, preceding equations or exposition, the increase in the stock of capital is simply the current level of capital minus the previous level of capital because KT is the current level of capital stock. And then KT minus one is the immediate past level of capital stock, like the capital stock for last year. T is like 2021. Then T minus one is 2021 minus one, which is 2020. So it's the capital stock of 2021 minus the capital stock of 2020, which gives us the change in capital stock, which is equal to V of YT, which is the level of national income in 2021, minus V of YT minus one, which is the level of national income in 2020. So if we factorize V on the right-hand side, we get this equation which is simply KT minus KT minus one, which is equal to V of Y T minus Y T minus one. If you look at KT minus KT minus one, it's just, it's simply the change in capital stock, which is our investment. And then Y T minus Y T minus one is the change in national income. So our cross investment or our investment is simply V of change in national income. Since increase in the stock of capital in AA, KT minus KT minus one represents investment in that year. Equation two can be rewritten as uh, I1, which is simply investment, which has substituted the, this term on the left-hand side. KT minus KT minus one is now, it's the change in capital, which is just another way of saying investment, which is equal to V of YT minus YT minus one, which yields us equation three. Equation three re reveals that as a result of increase in national income in any year, T from a previous year, T minus one, Increase in investment will be V times more than the increase in national income. Hence, it is V, that is the capital to output ratio, which represents the magnitude of the accelerator. So it's like uh, the accelerator coefficient, that V, the constant capital to output ratio is the accelerator coefficient. If the capital to output ratio is equal to three, then as a result of a certain increase in national income, investment will increase three times more. That is accelerator, the accelerator year will be equal to three. It thus follows that investment is a function of the change in national income. If income or output increases over time, that is when YT is greater than YT minus one, then investment will be positive. So if the current level of national income is greater than the previous level of national income, income in 2021 is greater than income in 2020, then investment will have to be positive. If income declines, that is the current year level of national income is lower than the previous year level of national income, then the it implies that there will be disinvestment which will be taking place. If the income remains constant, that is the current year and the previous year levels of national income are equal, it means they, there will be no investment. The level of investment will be zero. So an arithmetic example, which is pre presented in the following term, illustrates this. It illustrates this. 
we have made the following assumptions in the table, table 1.1. The capital to output ratio remains constant at three. The depreciation that takes place in the stock of capital is equal to one fifth of the stock existing in the previous year. Therefore, one fifth of the stock of capital is to be replaced every year. In table 1.1, it is supposed that in period T minus one and several periods before it, output or income is equal to $500. Given that the capital to output ratio is equal to three, then to produce $500 worth of output, $1,500 worth of capital will be required. Since uh, the capital stock is simply V multiplied by Y, so if we are to produce $500 worth of output, we must multiply by three, which is the, our naive accelerator or the capital to output ratio. Since depreciation of capital in period T minus one um, has occurred, it would be one fifth of the stock of capital existing in the previous period, which is also 1,500, so one fifth of 1,500, it means our replacement investment for that year would be $300. Since as compared to the previous period, there is no change in output in period T minus, the net investment in period T minus one would be zero. As a result, the gross investment in period T minus one would be equal to the level of depreciation uh, that is prevailing in that, in this simple economy. So just to understand what's going on, we start with the previous year level of uh, things, level of national income and the required capital stock. Obviously taking into account our naive accelerate. T minus one, it's like 2020. T it's like 2021, T plus one, 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029. And then the national income figures, which are just a contrived, which, are, which we take as given, we don't need to calculate them. They are taken as given. We start with the national income of, uh, say, $500, Zim dollars for 2020. And then in the current year, the level of national income is 510. 2022, it's 525. 2023, 550. 2024, it's 575. 2025, it's 575. It's, it's constant, it has plateaued. 2026, it's 560. 2027, it's 550. 2028, it's 500. 2029, it's 400. In other words, it's now declining. The required capital stock is just three times the level of national income which is of a particular year. If you calculate three times of 500, it gives you 1,500. Three times of, uh, three times 510, it's 1,530. Three times 525, 1575 and so on up to 1,200. Three times 400 is, 1,200. If you check uh, in the year 2024 and you in the year 2025, our national income plateaus and also uh, the required capital stock also plateaus. It is constant at uh, 1725, meaning to say during that time, there is no net investment. Between 2024 and 2025, there will be no net investment. Uh, invest, net investment or added investment will decline from 75 to zero. Then from then, 
there will be disinvestment in the economy since invest, the investment, the net investment figure is now negative, implying uh, that we are committing more to depreciation than to added investment. Hence, our net investment is negative. So if you look at the replacement uh, uh, capital, it's simply, it, it is simply one fifth of uh, the required capital in stock because uh, the, the rate of depreciation is constant uh, in all these uh, 10 years from T minus one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, for all of these 10 years, the, the rate of depreciation is just the same. It is one fifth of the capital stock of that particular year. If you look at one fifth of 1530, ju I'm just cross checking uh, the figures. One fifth of uh, uh, one fifth, one divided by five, which is zero point two, multiplied by fifteen thirty. Uh, it gives us three hundred and six. It gives us three hundred and six, and then one fifth point two times fifteen seventy five. It gives us 315. So if you look at our depreciation, it is factored into the following year for a previous required stock of capital. So the 300, it's for the, the 300 written against the year T is for the year T minus one level of capital. If you look at the 306 is associated with the year T. 315 associated with the year T plus one. 330 associated with the year T plus two up to the time when we reach this 300 against year T plus eight, which tallies with 1,500. It's just one fifth of 1,500. Now, if you look at um, um the net investment net investment is just the difference um between the required stock of capital when the stock of capital is plateauing in the year 2024 and uh, 2025 it's just a uh, net investment uh, it will be kt plus three because our, our current is KT plus four minus KT plus three, which is 1725 minus 1725, which gives us zero. Our cross investment for the first year, which is 2020 is 300. And then for the sec second year, which is 2021, which is our T, the current year, it will be 300 plus 30, which gives us 330. And then 330 plus 45, which gives us, uh, it will be 330. And then um, for the first year, it's 300 plus 30, which gives us 330. And then uh, the cross investment for um, the, the third year, which is our T plus one 2022 is 306 plus 45, which gives us 351. And then three, 315 plus 75 gives us 390 for the year T plus two, which is our 2023. And then for the year when investment plateaus is just zero, that's the 345, which gives us 345. And then 345 minus 45, it gives us 300. 336 minus 30, it gives us 306. 330 minus 150, it gives us 
180 and then 300 minus 300 for year 10, our cross investment is zero. So this illustrates the acceleration or the accelerator principle. Now suppose that production in the period T rises to $510 billion as a result of an increase in government spending or autonomous investment. To produce output worth $510 billion, uh, total capital worth $1530 billion, according to the previous table, is required. Since our KT is equal to V, YT, which implies that 1530 is equal to 3 plus 3 multiplied by 510, which gives us 1530, which is written in column 3. In this column, the 1530 is in column 3. Thus, as a result of increase in output income by 10 billion, net investment has increased by 30 billion, which is three times. That is 1530 billion minus uh, 1500, 1500 billion, it gives us 30 billion, which means that the accelerate uh, coefficient is equal to three. In period T, the depreciation equation it equals one fifth of the capital stock of period T minus one, uh, which occurs, that is capital depreciation will be 300, which is one fifth of 1,500, which gives us 300, which will okay in period T. Therefore, capital replacement in a replacement investment in the current year or period T will be equal to uh, $300 or maybe 300, 300 billion, if, if we want to add to the billion. That's gross investment in period T will be equal to 30 billion plus 300 billion, which gives us 330 billion. In this way, if output or income increases by $15 uh, dollars or 15 billion in period T plus one, uh, 25 dollars in period T plus two, and also $25 in period T plus three, the net investment will increase by three times the increment in national income. Uh, that is, net investment will increase from $45 in period T to, um, uh, let me stop sharing and make a correction there. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. $75 in period T plus two, and also $75 in period T plus three. It will be further observed from table 1.1 that when output falls in period T plus five, which is 2026, according to my characterization of the time period by $15, then the net investment will decline by three times of it. That is equal to 45. It has to be three times 15, which is $45 or so $45 billion. Likewise, from changes in output in different periods, we can find out net investment that will take place in any period and with the net replacement, with the capital replacement investment, we can obtain cross investment that will okay in that period. So if we just glance at uh, columns two, five and six, we see that with a change in output investment to increase by multiple of it, which is what we said at the beginning when we started our exposition of the acceleration principle. So it shows that uh, uh, investment can be a powerful destabilizing force in an economy uh, via the accelerator principle. The accelerator is the only force at work then if the accelerator is the only force at work, then we shall have too much of instability. There will be a lot of instability in the economy. 
more than is actually in real life, we find that there are limits in instability, both in the upward as well as in the downward direction. So that fluctuations in economic activity, uh, what are called business cycles, have peaks and bottoms that occur. And then criticisms. The first criticism is that um, uh, it is not true that an increase in output or income by an amount must always give rise to a multiple increase in, it, in investment. This is because if already some machines are lying idle, we just have to increase capacity of the existing machinery. We don't need to construct new machines in any economy. And then the other thing has to do with expectations of entrepreneurs in the economy. If entrepreneurs expect a, a rise in aggregate demand brought about by an increase in national income or output, and they expect this to be temporary, they just overwork existing machinery. They work beyond capacity rather than installing new plant. But if they expect the increase in national income to be more permanent, that's when they may embark on very serious investment. And then uh, the other thing, it has to do with the accelerator coefficient itself. It may not be constant. We know that it may not be constant. And the other criticisms are going to read them on your own from my slides. Thank you so much for listening in to the set of lectures. Uh, I believe that uh, you have benefited from this set of lectures. Uh, thank you so much for joining along. I'll meet you when I'm sharing on theories of consumption. Have a good evening.